Guys, I wanted to just share with you some thoughts that occurred to me uh, as I was at the gym today. And as you know, I'm on a fitness journey and I'm just applying everything I've ever learned about success, everything I've ever uh, applied in other areas of my life to success and then things I've taught on stages all over the world about how to succeed. I'm just applying it to this process that I'm in right now. And um, the workout program that I'm going through um, is for the most part, uh, focused on very high intensity interval training. And so every day you're doing weight lifting, but you, the weight lifting that you're doing is kind of whole body movement stuff. It's nothing isolated like, you know, traditional bench presses or lat pulls or things like that. It's whole body movements. And uh, you're also doing one exercise followed by another, followed by another with either no rest or very little rest. And today the workout was... Uh, it was a killer, and it was four exercises in a row, all of which were some variation of a lunge or a squat in combination with dumbbells that you did something with, like pressing them over your heads or cleaning them or, or whatever. And um, so, you know, the, the, the workout required four rounds, um, 16 reps each exercise time. I mean, four exercises, 16 reps per exercise times six rounds, so 24 um, exercises in a row, no stopping, no resting. Well, I expect that, you know, I'm going to um, struggle in these workouts because I'm out of shape, I'm weak, it's embarrassing, I've already talked about that. So, um, I'm, ex I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to get to round four or five and it's really going to just start to suck bad and I'm going to have to find a way to get through it to the end. Well, the first exercise of this workout was called a uh, Belgian split squats. And so what a Belgian split squat is, is you uh, elevate one leg, one foot, if you will, behind you and you stick the other leg out in front of you almost like in a lunge or in the position you would be in when you're going to make a lunge. And you just squat down, you squat with that one leg, with the other leg elevated behind you so that one leg is doing the entire squat, has all the weight. And you have dumbbells next to you that you have to um, be using. Well, I go down and I start doing that and I'm not three or four reps in and I'm already hurting. And at this point, the voices in my head all the things that happen inside our minds, all of us, no matter what we're trying to do, they all showed up. And they were all screaming at me all kinds of stuff about how bad this is going to be and why I've really bitten off more than I can chew. And I should just go do something way easier because I'm not ready for this. And at that point, I'm also tempted to, to think about the length of this workout because I'm staring down the barrel of 24 four rounds and I'm not through round one. In fact, I'm only halfway through round one and I'm already hurting. And so here's where some principles start to kick in that I wanted to share with you. And the first one is that you're in a constant negotiation with yourself. And the problem for the average person, the thing that separates the average person from the successful person is that the average person loses every one of those negotiations with the quitter. The quitter shows up and you're buying everything they're selling all the time. Whatever they're selling you, you're buying it. Do it tomorrow. Hey man, you worked out yesterday. You're good. Take it easy. You don't want to injure yourself. I mean, my goodness, that's why you've been out of the gym for several years anyway, is you had that injury. Remember, you don't want that to happen. And whatever they're saying to you, you're buying. You can make more calls tomorrow. Look, good for you. You made two calls today. I mean, I know you didn't get an appointment, but hey, just come back tomorrow. You can do it then. Man, you you know, it's probably a bad time of day. Man, maybe today is a weird day because it's right after the holiday, so people are still getting back in the swing of things. Maybe wait till tomorrow. This is what the quitter in you is saying and you're buying it. And I would just say to you, you got to quit buying what they're selling. When you're in that negotiation, you have to win that negotiation with yourself. And this gets back into the self-talk that I talked about in a previous video. 
See, at this point, it's how you see yourself. And it's whether you're going to sell them or they're going to sell you. And I'm selling them because I see myself as a champion. I see myself as a finisher. I see myself as a winner. So I do things that are consistent with winners, with champions, with finishers. And I just say to myself, I'm sorry, bro. You can't sell me that crap. I'm a finisher. It doesn't, I'm not buying that right now. And I have a little thing I say too, which maybe I've mentioned. Uh, I mention this on stage all the time, but I'll just tell you guys, you know, anytime I run into a, a, a a significant obstacle, I just say, man, you're being tested right now. This is an amazing test. You're going to pass this test. This is awesome. You're going to pass with flying colors. And I just talk about passing the tests. And so there I am, and I start having to negotiate myself uh, with myself, and I start winning that negotiation. Now, the second thing that is a principle that you can apply here is this. If I had focused on the length of the workout I would have been done right there. If I had focused on how far I had to go, put a fork in me. I'm done because it's too far. I'm hurting in round one, and you're telling me there's 23 more? 23? Pfft, not happening. We're done. Let's just call it quits. Let's go sit in the sauna. So what you have to do is you have to focus on the moment, and you have to negotiate with yourself to win that moment. Okay, look. Forget that there's 50 calls here. You're not making 50 calls. You're making one call. Let's make one call. See, for me, it was you got to do one rep. You got to do one rep. Now, another thing that's in the back of my mind is this. This is a timed workout. And people have been posting their times, you know, for what they've done in this workout. And I know that. And I'm a competitive guy. And so my stopwatch is running. But you know what? That's not going to serve me to think about the time. Because if I'm embarrassed to put up a long time, I'll just quit because it seems safer in my weird quitter brain. It seems safer to put up no time to have just slunk back into the shadows and like I was never there than to put up a real embarrassing time. But see, finishers put up an embarrassing time. They don't care about how long it is. They just care about finishing. They care about doing what finishers do. And so I would do one rep and I would be hurting and I would negotiate with myself to do the next rep and I would be hurting and I'd negotiate with myself to do the next rep and I would be hurting. And I didn't give a rip that that stopwatch was running. I just let it run. Now, I end up getting through the first round and I got five rounds more to go. And there again, you're not supposed to stop. You're you're just supposed to go through it. But the key is to have done it. The key is to lay your head on the pillow at night and know that you didn't quit today. Because quitting is a muscle that you develop. And overcoming the instinct to quit is a muscle that you develop. And so I would get through, I got through the first round and I literally just had to pace around and I'm huffing and puffing. And I mean, people are like probably looking at me like, oh my gosh, this poor weak soul. Like, why are you even in here, bro? Don't you know this isn't where you belong? I mean, you know, the the workout called for for 20 to 30 pound dumbbells and I'm using seven and a half and 10. This is how weak I am. And I'm still smoked. My legs are screaming, four straight leg exercises. But I just sat there long enough to get my head right and focus on doing the next one. Kept going, started doing the next one, started doing the next one, started doing the next one. And, um, What ended up happening was I ended up getting all the way through to the fifth round. Now, at this point, I am stunned. Like, I can't believe that it's the fifth round because when my brain had initially thought about doing six rounds, I'm like, there is no chance. And I'm starting to get excited. Like, wow, you're in number five, bro. You've blown out four of these. You didn't think you could do one. I'm starting to get motivated. This is a lesson. If you focus on the length of the journey, you will quit. Don't do it because you'll surprise yourself. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other. When I was in the military, we used to have to do these ridiculous exercises where they'd take us out in over 24 hours. We'd have to march, you know, 60, 50, 60 miles, whatever, and overcome like all these different obstacles along the way and to overpass these tests and you'd get two hours sleep and one meal. And if you thought about how long that day was going to be, you were done. All you could do is put a boot in front of the other boot. That's all you could do. And then you'd sh- be shocked to wake up and it, or look up and it's the next morning and you're only four hours away from the finish. This is what we got to do in our is success journey. This is what you got to do as an entrepreneur. You got to make that next call. You got to make that next invite. You got to practice that next 
close or overcoming an objection. You got to practice your intro another time, just once, or get up and just just say hello, welcome to the presentation one time. Like that's all. I'm not thinking about doing the whole presentation. I'm thinking about saying hi. Like this is what you got to do. You've got to get overcome thinking long term. Think about right now and win that negotiation. And so that's what I had done. And so I got to the fifth round. And at that point, um, again, I'm doing everything is a squat or a lunge. And I am doing uh, one of those Belgian split squats. And I feel some significant pain in my front left hip and down my left leg. Now, this isn't the good kind of pain. It's not the kind of pain of like, man, your muscles are growing, you're burning. No, no, no. It was like something just broke. But I kind of pushed through it, again, one rep at a time. And I'm like, okay, this is good. And I get to the sixth round. And I'm in the middle of the sixth round, and I hear three pops like gunfire, like pop, pop, pop. And it was in my left hip, and it hurt like crazy. It hurt like crazy. It literally caused me to sit down. And so now, here we go. Tested. You're going to finish? You're going to quit? Now I got all the reason in the world. Dude, you do not want to injure yourself. Okay, this is stupid. You've already done five. You didn't think you could do one. I mean, how great are you? You're amazing. Let's go. Go get in heat. You need to get in the sauna. You know, the heat will help those muscle cramps. And you'll be good. Nope. Not buying what you're selling. I mean, I would just ask you guys, if you're in a relationship with somebody that they constantly lie to you, they constantly take advantage of you, they constantly sabotage you, they constantly um, cause you to be the worst version of yourself. I mean, would you stick around? Some of you probably shouldn't answer that question, actually. But I wouldn't. And that's the person in your head. You're in a long-term relationship with that person. You need to send them on their way. Bye-bye. You're done. I am not buying what you're selling. And so I don't do business with the quitter. I don't buy them. And so it took even longer. And I went even slower, and it was even harder, and it hurt like crazy. But in the end, I did it. And when I was done, I felt freaking jacked. And that's how you'll feel too. You will feel amazing. And when I clicked that stopwatch off, it was almost 50 minutes. 50. People have been posting 20-minute times, 18-minute times, 22 minutes. I did 50. You know what? I don't give a rip because I did it. I beat that guy. I won today. You know what that means? I'm going to win tomorrow, and I'm going to win the next day, and I'm going to keep winning because it's a muscle. It's a habit. We just did this leadership summit, and we talked a lot. For hours and hours, we talked about character. Character is something that is lacking in this world today, and there are three pillars of character. There are three ingredients of character, and one of them is called moral discipline. It is the ability to ignore or to Turn away from your base instincts, your first in instinct of what you would do, and do the right thing. That's what moral discipline. Like, you want to say these words, but you, you, you get that under control. You refrain from doing that. You ignore that base instinct to lash out, and you say the other thing. You were going to, you know, behave or t take part in a certain activity, Nope, I'm going to ignore that because I, that's my base instinct, but I'm able to overcome it. That is a muscle that you develop, moral discipline, moral fiber. This is what we are building in the success journey. And I would just say to you, you know, for me right now, it's the gym, but it applies to absolutely everything you ever wanted to do. Everything you're scared to do, everything that sucks when you do it, everything that's uncomfortable to you, everything that hurts if you will win those individual tests and keep seeing yourself as a finisher, talk to yourself as a finisher, tell yourself you're going to pass the test, don't think about the length of the journey, don't give a rip about how long it takes. Listen to me, if you're especially if you're on this entrepreneurial path, I just got to tell you, you're on the best path of all time. And I don't give a rip if you see people getting rich in five years and you're still not. Who cares? If it took you 10, it's worth it. If it took you 20, it's worth it. It's better than 40, yes? If it took you 30, it's worth it. Still better. If it took you 40 versus 40, it's still better because your leash would be growing the entire time. At least you would be surrounding yourself with winners and champions and people who think excellently and people who are reading and developing themselves and, you know, positive and making an impact. At least you would have done something that could have potentially left a legacy past your lifetime. Something that is yours that you can give to the world versus just 
building somebody else's thing. Even if it's 40 years, it's worth doing. But it's going to hurt. And, it's, and you can't think about the length of the journey. Think about doing that next rep and win that negotiation. Stop doing business with the quitter. So I hope this has helped, guys. We'll post more videos like this as we keep going through this journey. And uh, leave your comments in the, in the comments section. Let me know any questions you've got. I'll try to answer any of them. And uh, if you have any topics you'd like us to cover here, just let me know that as well. God bless you guys. Let's go win.